In this video, I want to walk you through the basics of what you need to know of the user interface and how to join a Zoom meeting that your church may be holding. I will be doing this from a smartphone standpoint. I have an Android. I will do another follow-up video for a tablet as well as your computer. But we're starting with a smartphone and the concepts are going to be exactly the same with an iPhone. But let's go ahead and just start from the beginning. So as you see here, this is my Galaxy smartphone. And what we're going to do is you have to, no matter what you do, you obviously need the app. So we're going to go here to the Play Store or go to the App Store on your iPhone. And we're going to look up Zoom. Now, just be mindful that you always get the Zoom app that's from Zoom. Dot us. There are a bunch of other Zoom apps out there, but make sure you're getting the authentic one. All right, so let's go ahead. Now, I've already installed it, but normally it would say an install here or get if you're on the uh, iPhone app store. So it'll install. Shouldn't take very long to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and open it. Now, there are multiple ways that you can join a Zoom meeting. This is all dependent on how the meeting is set up. When you set up a meeting, you always get a meeting ID. Sometimes you're required to have a passcode. That way it locks that only certain people can join it. So if you get those numbers, you can just put that in the app and you put the meeting number in. If there's no passcode, it lets you go join the meeting. If not, a pop-up will show up and asking you to put in your passcode to join the meeting. Now, the next thing you could do is they send, there's option of a link to this meeting that the, it'll come through like in a message you can get in the email. Someone can send it to you over text or anything, and then you just tap it, and it will push all that information automatically into the app, and then you don't really have to enter anything. I'm going to give you an example of doing both. All right. Now, I've already set up a meeting on my desktop here. And like I said, you'll get a, this is the meeting ID here. And then there's a passcode. Now, normally the passcode is randomly generated or someone can just tell you exactly, um, you can set it to be something exactly the same. And this is the link that I was talking about. But what we're going to do is I'm going to cut back over here to my phone and we can go here to join a meeting by just tapping join at the top. And we're going to put the meeting number in here that we have. And that is four, eight, three, six, four, two, eight, three, zero, four, seven. All right. Now, before we even join, you can tap right below here and you can change your name. Now I'm going to change this just because this is on my account. So I'm going to say AJ's phone. All right. Now, most of the time it's kind of etiquette to put your name in there. Cause most of the time it's just going to take your device. It might say iPhone or something like that. And there's no way for anybody to know who you are. So anyway, that's it. Now, before we join again, we have some more options here. Don't connect to audio. That means once you join the meeting, they're going to be able to hear you using the your phone's microphone and speaker. That is your option, as well as turn off my video. So I'm going to turn that on because I don't want my video to start at the very beginning. You just never know. You got to be careful of everybody that might be around. Um, so we're going to do that. And now let's go ahead first. Let me start the meeting. All right, so I have my meeting up right here. And now we're going to go ahead and join. All right, so now if we cut over, you can see that AJ's phone is trying to connect. Now, as you see at the bottom of the screen here, I have an option that I can even dial in to use the phone function of your phone to actually call in, or you can call over the internet makes it easier to call over the internet. If you have any issues, your um, signal is bad, you can always switch to dial in, but I'm going to use call over the internet. All right. So now, and I'm going to turn. Now I'm going to mute my mic because I'm getting an echo here. But as you can see, I'm, now I am connected into the meeting. Now, let's go over the interface of the device so that way you can see and know exactly what 
how you can connect to each one of these. So if you just tap the screen, you're going to see your command buttons at the bottom. We have our speaker here at the upper left. We have the leave button to the upper right. If we go to Zoom, we can get all the other information about the meeting if need be. There's that link that we were talking about that you can send text to somebody to join. If we tap again, we have our mute, which I need to mute. Um, we have our start video. That's how you can start your camera up. Now, the next thing you have is participants. If you tap on that, it will show you a list of every single person that is in here. There's also actually there's also another button that you can press right here to invite somebody. You just tap invite and then you can send it any way that's listed on your phone. Let's close that. And if we go to more, we have our chat box, disconnect audio. This is where you can go to disconnect and then switch back to dialing in the phone if you need to. Um, your chat options here. We also have um, claim host. We'll talk about that. Most of the time you wouldn't need to do this at all. This is if somebody has to leave the meeting and the person who set the meeting up, if they left, the whole meeting would be over. They would need to hand over the host to something. Now, the only reason I'm seeing this as well, too, is because I have my main account on this phone. So you normally would not see that. Meeting settings, again, is something that you normally would not see unless you set the meeting up. And then virtual background, this is where you can change how it looks behind you. And we also have raise a hand. Now, this is the etiquette of Zoom to where you, if you have a question, instead of everybody talking over each other, they can raise their hand. So if I come over here to my desktop, as you can see, I, as the host, I can see that, oh, AJ's phone has a question and then you just wait for it to be called on instead of having a whole lot of people just trying to speak over top of each other. So let me go ahead and lower my hand here. All right. So now if we come back over here. Now I mentioned share your desktop, um, the share button. Now I'm going to go hit share, but as you can see, only the host can share in this meeting. So everybody can't do that. It's dependent on the host. They need to give you permission to do that. So this is a good example. If you're like, you're doing a Bible study and someone asks you to do something, or if you're in a church meeting and you need to share the financials or something like that, you're not the host, but you want to share some, some information, a picture, something with everybody in the meeting, you would need to ask the host would give you permission and then you can do that. All right, now let's go ahead and turn that video on. We're going to tap the screen and then just start video. And now my video is up. And if I cut over here to my screen, you can see my video is coming through perfectly fine. Now, a lot of times when people see this, they're wondering, oh, I have the wrong camera on. How do you fix that? Just tap the screen again, and you're going to see this camera icon at the upper left. Go ahead and tap that. And now it's going to switch to the other camera. So you can see my desktop now. And to switch it back, just tap the screen again and switch the camera back. So that's one way to navigate around this. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave this meeting. And I'm going to show you how easy it is now to just join this over a text. So I already sent myself this link or just say that you're trying to invite somebody else here and you don't want to give them all the numbers and everything like that. You can send a link similarly, just like this. And I'm just going to tap. Boom. And brought me in without having to put any information at all. Now, again, it is dependent on how whoever in your church is sending you a zoom link. Honestly, the link is one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, you can still put a password in it, but you don't have to rely on anybody to type in that password unless they really want to. Using that link will just pass you in automatically. So if there are any other questions that you'd like me to go over in the basic user interface of using Zoom in a Bible study, and this is mainly from a participant standpoint, please leave them down below. And also, please don't forget to um, click the like button um, as well. It really helps out this channel. It helps push these videos out to more people who may be looking for it or may not even know 
how to find this, but it will show up in their recommendations because of your like. So I'd really appreciate that you smash that like button. So if you like this type of content, I would appreciate a like, <laughs> consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. This is AJ. Thank you for watching and we will see you on the next video later.